Whoa. Thank you. I've got a cat. So you must have a story. Hi. My name is Andy Harrop. And I call this short film A Study of Fear in Children. Yes. Welcome to your dread time story. I do hope you enjoy it. <laughs> People often say to me, they say, Andy, what do you enjoy most about being a storyteller? And I say, I enjoy frightening children. Yes, I am the Freddy Krueger of the storytelling world. And just like poor misunderstood Freddy, I have a good reason for the way that I am. You see, back in the 1960s, when I was a child, difficult to believe, it was considered great fun and fair game for adults to frighten children. My mother and father, my aunts and uncles, and mostly my granddad, used to delight in telling me scary stories that would have me quaking in my cap and shaking in my short pants. Oh, yes. In those days, there were two things that totally terrified me. And the first was children's television. It would seem that the censors back then had a sense of humour and it was all dark. Does anybody remember the brooding eeriness of the Children of the Stones? But even worse was a miniseries called The Singing ringing tree. The singing ringing tree was based on some weird Eastern European fairy tale that was like something out of your worst psychedelic nightmare. All the characters, all the characters in it were, were horrible. There was a little poison dwarf in a silver tracksuit that only did wicked horrible things to people. And he turned the handsome prince, the hero, into this great big woolly monster that looked like a cross between Bungle the Bear and a werewolf. I can tell you that that series was responsible for psychologically scarring a whole generation of children. M -m 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 my generation. But even worse than the singing ringing tree was 20 notes. Twenty Noses was one of those bogeyman tales that adults delight in telling children to either get them to do something or to stop them doing something. Like, for instance, Ginny Green Teeth. Ginny Green Teeth was the dently challenged water monster that used to swim around in lakes and ponds. And if a child went too close to the edge, she would grab it by the ankles, pull it under the water and drown it. You didn't go near lakes or ponds in my day. Well, there again, the halitosis would have probably got you first. But even worse than Ginny Green Teeth was Twenty Noses. Twenty Noses was supposed to live under the beds of children. And if you didn't have a wash or clean your teeth before you went to bed at night, Twenty Noses would come creeping out and sniff you. I always remember my granddad telling me before I went to bed, if you don't wash before you go to bed, twenty noses will come and sniff you. Twenty noses had no features on its face, of course, except for twenty noses. Naughty children who didn't wash would be sniffed by him because he lived under the bed. Now that is fear for a six-year-old. I can tell you now, I used to bleach myself before I went to bed. Well, after many years, several courses in psychotherapy and sessions in counselling, I joined the army and I managed to put 20 noses to the back of my mind, although there were still nights when I would sleep with my rifle just in case. Eventually, I left the army and I became a storyteller amongst other things. Well, as storytellers we like to research things. And I went to the reference library in Eccles and I was reading an old book on 
Lancashire folklore, I turned a dusty, yellowed page, and there it was, the origins of twenty noses. I shuddered and read on. There was a long time ago a wicked woman by the name of Esther Hands. Esther was known to gossip and, well, she kept a black cat and often worked on a Sunday. And so she was probably a witch. <laughs> Such behaviour can only lead to misfortune. And Esther consorted with the devil and became pregnant with his child. She bound her belly with strips of cloth because she was unmarried. She could feel that vile abomination wriggling inside her. And when it came time to give birth, she took herself off to a dark part of the woods. Esther died from shock when that thing finally emerged from her womb, for it had no features on her face, just twenty sniffling noses. The vile infant crawled away from its dead mother and began to take delight and nourishment from smells it found on the forest floor, mainly animal excrement, especially fox droppings, because, well, they smell worse than anything. Twenty noses would find things that were dead and rotting and smell them, and so it got stronger and stronger. And eventually, Twenty Noses stood up and staggered into the village of Farnworth, where it delighted in the dung heaps, stuck its nose into cesspits, and swam in the open sewers. It was always hungry for putrid smells, but the smell it loved more than anything was the stink of unwashed children at bedtime, and twenty noses would creep into their bedrooms and hide under the bed, and when the candle was finally extinguished, twenty noses would inhale deeply and come crawling out, and with a long, dirty fingernail, scratch back the bedclothes and terrify grubby infants with its nocturnal sniffings and snortings. And even a child whose prayers are right and plays amongst the roses, if it does not wash before bed at night, may be sniffed by twenty noses. Sweet dreams, children. Good night. And now, it's over to you.